All righty. Uh, hey there, everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to our top five anticipated movies for fall, winter 2019, with, Woo! of course, honorable mentions. And this video is actually a pretty special one because this anticipated series is actually going to be five years old. By the time we get to September 14th of 2019, this anticipated series will be five years old. When yeah. I started doing this series on my channel, it was uh, Brian Mendoza right here and J53518 or Jacob. It all started with the three of us, and it's kind of expanded much more since. And I just want to say very quick before I do get to my guests one by one that it's been awesome doing this, and I'm glad to see that you all seem to really enjoy watching these videos and i hope my guests have just as much of a good time being in these videos so yeah i just want to say happy five years to this series and the second thing i want to bring up is because as you can tell we are no longer on google hangouts because unfortunately Wait, it did what? shut down we are? yeah Wait, what was I, 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 what? I, 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 Kevin, Kevin, wait, I know wait, it's what's shocking. What's going on? I, I know, I know, I know, Kevin, I know it's shocking. But wait, 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 I just want to... Kevin, shut up! up. <laughs> thank you. Th thank you, Auburn. Um, yes, but I did want to do a little plug and mention that Auburn Wanderer, you know, on his channel, he did the last Google Hangouts ever live stream on his channel thank where you. me and the other guys here have joined him. So if you want to watch that, I will happily leave the link for that last ever stream in the description down below. But yes, we are all on Skype now. This should be a lot of fun. I am just warning you ahead of time that we are going to have a lot of honorable mentions, all of us. Not so just me, yourself. not just me. So now I'm going to go ahead and introduce everyone one by one from bottom to top, as you can see, starting off with... Brian Mendoza, the guy that has been here since the first episode of this series. Uh, take it away, Brian. How do you feel about that? Well, I'll confess something. I never saw Dracula Untold. That was on my <laughs> list at the time. Oh my I only saw... I only saw... Well, all these the years later, what the hell? I saw Walk Among the Tombstones and the Equalizer. I don't think I saw anything else. Maybe I mentioned John Wick? I yeah, think. yeah. Yeah, only those three I wow, saw. Wow, you were slacking that year. <laughs> oh, I didn't have the A, a list back then, so yeah, no, I, I, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't get on you too hard for that because I, I was the same way. <laughs> I can't believe it's been five years since we started this video series. It's crazy. Uh, I've gone older, obviously. <laughs> Uh, I think I think I think all of us have, yeah. Yeah, I don't age. I don't age. I literally don't age. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he's, he's fucking Dracula. But, uh, yeah. I'm excited to join with my buddies. Uh, they've been uh, with me for uh, quite some time, and I'm happy. With Yay! Them. I'm and, uh, we're gonna do this. <laughs> and uh, speaking of Kevin, that is the next oh, guest hi. right here. Uh, hello, Kevin Folk. How are you doing? Uh, Tony, my boy, uh, it's been quite a ride, let me tell you. I've been here since, what, 2015? Uh, the, actually, I think it was the fall of 2015. Yeah, the is, fall of 2015, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's kind of come a uh, full circle in that way, and uh, always very happy to be here for sure. As all of you guys know, I usually have a uh, pretty uh, big list of honorable mentions, but thankfully I'm not alone with that this year, so that's very good for sure. Um, either way, there's a lot of great stuff coming out this fall season, uh, a lot of stuff that, um, you know, was very, very hard to make, a lot of stuff that was la very last minute that I'm very excited for, so very excited to get into this, so let's go! Alrighty, the next person here to introduce is FilmFan0599. Hello everyone, uh, it is FilmFan0599 here again, and, huh... The only episode that I have not been on here for this is literally the first episode. Ever since then, I have been on every. I have been on every single one. So yeah, cool. yeah, since, since the spring 2015 one, huh? Yes, since the spring 2015 one, I have literally not missed an anticipated video. So I'm doing good. I'm going four years strong. So um, but anyways, um. So yeah, thank you once again, Tony, for always having me on these, and uh, it's cool that this uh, series is turning five years old. It's half a fucking decade. Um, so uh, yeah, wow. it's going to be uh, quite great to, uh, because honestly, um, this fall season is pretty packed, and yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming out, so I'm very, very excited to talk about all the movies that I have <laughs> in my honorable mentions and in my list. 
And now the last person here in this video is Auburn Wanderer. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It is me. <laughs> you look like you're about to fucking sneeze. <laughs> it is me, the Auburn Wanderer himself. Now, uh, it, I believe I have been here for every single one uh, starting in the fall uh, slash winter one of 2015, I believe. As have I. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the same time as Kevin, yeah, actually. Yeah, the same time as I was Kevin. You know, it was a very different time back then. Uh, I, I barely knew uh, Mr. Tiger Dude here. Uh, Kevin was uh, still as annoying as always. Brian was, you know, the coolest guy alive, and Plum Pan hated me. Um, you know, it was, <laughs> it was a great time. You know, and, and uh, it's just crazy that, you know, we've got all these years later um, to hear. You know, it's actually pretty interesting, you know, if you go back to um to that to see, like, how much, like, we've actually, like, changed and stuff since then, and how, like, you know, our tastes have sort of changed. I mean, my tastes have changed a lot, but like, you know, it's like, it's like cool to see that. Um, and you know, it's just, it's pretty, pretty crazy. So I'm very happy to be on here as always. I really appreciate it. I'm Miss Tony Estrada and I'm very, very, very excited uh, about this one specifically. Uh, should be very nice. And uh, yeah, fuck you, Kevin. Yeah. Fuck you too. I hate all of you. And of course, this is the part we get to our honorable mentions. And like I said oh. just, just earlier, it is the jam packed honorable mentions. This is probably the most <laughs> jam packed honorable mentions you're going to see either ever or in a while. Kevin style. Uh, I, I, I could tell you this. This is probably my biggest list out of all these videos that we have done thus far. So brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, because I got, yes, top 22. So in order, I have number 22, The Lighthouse, number 21, Uncut Gems, number 20, A Shaun the Sheep Movie, Farmageddon, number 19, Motherless Brooklyn, number 18, Bombshell, number 17, Vord versus Ferrari, Number 16, Dolomite is my name. Number 15, 21 Bridges. Number 14, Ad Astra. Number 13, Klaus, the traditional animated Netflix movie, which I'm really excited for. Number 12, 1917. Number 11, El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. Number 10, Honey Boy. Number 9, The Irishman. Number 8, Frozen 2. Number 7, It Chapter 2. And number six, Lucy in the Sky. All right. All right. At number 25 is Breaking Bad. I mean, uh, El Camino, Breaking Bad movie. 24, 1917. 23, Cats. 22, Jumanji, The Next Level. 21, Knives Out. 20, The Report. 19, Ford v. Ferrari. 18, Charlie's Angels. 17, Last Christmas. 16, Doctor Sleep, 15, Lucy in the Sky, 14, The Goldfinch, 13, Frozen 2, Gemini Man, number 12, Terminator Dark Fate, number 11, number 10, The Lighthouse, number 9, Zombieland 2, Double Tap, number 8, Rambo Last Blood, number 7, Ad Astra, or as I like to call it, Cliff Booth in Space, number 6, The Irishman, and yeah! Now we have the king of honorable yes. mentions right here. So I'm we're, we're not. This one. All right. So as I said before, uh, this is the only time I'm actually not, um, you know, I, I actually can be proud of the fact that I have a very copious amount of uh, honorable mentions. But uh, in no particular order until we get to my top 20, we have Miss Purple, Monos, Ad Astra, The Death of Dick Lawn, Nimic, Pain and Glory, Low Tide, The King, Zombieland 2, Double Tap. The Laundromat, Dolomite is my name, The Last Full Measure, Terminator Dark Fate, Motherless Brooklyn, Harriet, The Good Liar, Last Christmas, All Rise, Klaus, The Lodge, The Report, 21 Bridges, Marriage Story, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, The Aeronauts, Jumanji The Next Level, Black Christmas, Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, Sean the Sheep Farmageddon, Bombshell, 1917, Clemency, and then my 20 through 6, we have... Number 20, Uncut Gems. 
19, Judy. 18 is A Hidden Life. 17, Parasite. Uh, number 16 is Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Number 15 is Jojo Rabbit. Number 14 is Lucy in the Sky. Number 13 is Honey Boy. Number 12 is Ford vs. Ferrari. Number 11 is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Number 10, Knives Out. Number 9, Frozen 2. Number 8, The Goldfinch. Number 7, Queen and Slim. And then number 6, the one that got literally this close to my top 5, but unfortunately it didn't, Dr. Sleep. All right, film fan, it's your turn with them honorable mentions. Oh boy, okay, all right. So everybody, here are my honorable mentions. You all ready for this? All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. so, starting off with It Chapter 2, Rambo, Last Blood. Ad Astra, Lucy in the Sky, Parasite, The Lighthouse, which I saw the trailer for before starting this video. So, um, Jojo Rabbit, Terminator Dark Fate, Last Christmas, Doctor Sleep, Honey Boy, Void vs. Ferrari, Knives Out, Jumanji The Next Level, and finally, Uncut Gems. And now, Auburn Wonder, it's now up to you. All right, and now for the films that do have a confirmed release date that did not crack the top five. All right, The Aeronauts, The Report, The King, 1917, Motherless Brooklyn, Terminator Dark Fate, Honey Boy, The Laundromat, Jalen Silent Bob Reboot, Dolomite Is My Name, Marriage Story, Judy, Jojo Rabbit, Hustlers, A Shaun the Sheep uh, movie, Farmageddon, Lucy in the Sky, The Goldfinch, El Camano, A Breaking Bad movie, Ad Astra, Queen and Slim, Gemini Man and Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker, uh, and these are the ones that like I'm like extremely excited for. Knives Out, Ford vs Ferrari, The Lighthouse, uh, Little Women, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Doctor Sleep, and uh, the one that I'm most excited for all mentions is The Irishman. Now that we got our jam-packed honorable mentions out of the way, we can now get to our top five. So my number five is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. <laughs> I, I'm really, really excited for this film. The day they announced this movie and the day they announced that Tom Hanks was going to play Mr. Rogers, I was already on board, like way before that trailer even dropped. But then when that trailer obviously dropped, it just enhanced my excitement level for this movie. I uh, loved uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, the documentary that came out last year. I just thought it was such a great and informative documentary that showcases just how how such a how much of a genuine person Mr. Rogers truly was. And based on what I see in the trailer, it truly looks like Tom Hanks is gonna really capture, you know, the genuineness of Mr. Rogers just so well. The movie looks really beautifully shot, really beautifully directed. Performances other than just Tom Hanks, they all look really great across the board. And it just looks like it's gonna be one of those touching movies that we're gonna get for this upcoming season. Not a lot to really add to this one other than that. I think it looks really, really good. And I really hope it delivers. So that is my number five, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. I, oh, my number five is also another beautiful day in the neighborhood. So um, Tom Hanks. My favorite actor of all time. He looks perfect at, as Mr. Rogers. Probably from someone who watched some reruns of his show back in the day. I actually had some tears out of my eyes watching the trailer. I'm like, oh my god, he's so he looks the part. And the film looks well shot. Looks fantastic. I'm very excited to see this movie. And then we were Tom Hanks. So I'm like, take all my money, dude. Give it all to me. Take all of it. I'm gonna go there day one. Yep. All right, so like I said, uh, this list was very hard to put together. It's a lot of things were switched around for a while, but ultimately my number five is one that I've been hyped for for a very long time, and that is Little Women. Um, look, I mean, Greta Gerwig, just saying Greta Gerwig has another film coming out after Lady Bird and that she's re-collabing with Saoirse Ronan, that automatically has me on board. But then you factor in the rest of the cast. I mean, Emma Watson, uh, Eliza Scanlon from Sharp Objects, who I thought was amazing uh, last year, Laura Dern, Meryl Streep, uh, Florence Pugh, who I've been just absolutely adoring lately. Uh, so many great uh, talented actors in here. And, you know, it's such a classic story in that way. And yes, there's been many various adaptations of this, but I feel like like Gerwig is going to 
bring her own spin to it. I think there's a lot that she can really do here for sure. It's one of those trailers where every time I see it, I just get more and more excited for it. I'm very excited to see what Gerwig does have up her sleeve here. I think this is definitely going to be another great film for her. I do think she's one of the best filmmakers working today, and I think it's very much going to show here. This is easily her largest work yet, and I really do think it's going to pay off in the end. I think this could be something really special for sure. So for all those reasons, it's definitely my number five. Um, my number five is The Irishman. Uh, right. uh, like, you know, I was obviously very excited about this movie beforehand, you know, because it's Martin Scorsese, one of my favorite directors. I love uh, Martin, you know, he's great. Um, and you got that cast with Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci coming out of retirement to uh, come back to acting, which gets me very excited. Then that trailer came out, which was great. And, you know, the fact that this movie is now going to be three and a half hours long, Man, I am excited. Uh, this looks great. Um, uh, you know, I'm generally excited for this movie. Uh, it looks like it seems like it's probably uh, definitely going to be something special, you know. And this is on Netflix, so, you know, I, I'm going to watch it the moment it drops. Well, maybe not the moment it drops, because it's going to be like 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. When it drops, I'm not watching. I'm not watching. I, I need to wa I pick a perfect time during the night to watch this since it's 3 o'clock. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I'm really looking forward to this. I think this looks fantastic. The de-aging on Robert De Niro looks really, really great. And um, yeah, this looks really fantastic. I'm very excited about it. So yeah, The Irishman is my number five. All right. Here we go. My number five is Joker. All right. So... Um, Joaquin Phoenix is currently my favorite actor working today, besides Colin McLaughlin. And the fact that Joaquin Phoenix, a guy of this stature, is playing the fucking Joker is enough to get me excited. But Todd Phillips, like, I'm very impressed with him because, like, it, to, to see him go from, like, The Hangover to essentially an art house comic book movie is really impressive i'm not saying i'm not trying to like go like say like the hangover was like a bad movie or anything but like just seeing like something like something that's like you know like not i'm i would say silly as the hangover to go to like something as like really mature dark and ground in reality as this is really really crazy you know to see and the new trailer just came out a few days ago and i'm even more excited this film looks like it understands the character of the joker super super well what makes him so terrifying because to me he's the greatest villain of all time it seems like the film yes they are trying to go for a tax driver king of comedy vibe but i still feel like at the same time it still feels like it has its own vibe in a way you know there's also you know zazzy beats and robert de niro who are you know a great obviously de niro's you know one of the best actors of all time so obviously you know that's really exciting it has so much talent coming together and it's based around source material that's absolutely brilliant i'm just so so excited to see it because the trailer looks like it has atmosphere it looks like it has grit it looks like it's just gonna go for it which a film about the joker you need you you can't hold back and also it being rated r it, it, i'm so happy uh it seems like it's gonna be really graphic i believe it's rated r for like strong graphic violence and stuff which i'm, I'm very very excited for i'm hoping this film really like creeps me out and is really really intense because the joker is such a psychotic fucking messed up person and um to see this take on the character is going to be interesting you know i'm really excited also to see how a, a new take on the joker because you know todd phillips has said that this film it's not really based on like you know the killing joke or anything else that has come out that is like about the joker's backstory because we don't know his backstory this film looks like it it has itself um in a really good position uh for award season as well which is uh, which is really interesting to see and i'm just i'm just extremely excited to see this movie um from all the talent involved taking the source material and making it its own thing i'm just i'm so excited um and that is why joker is my number five now we're gonna get into our number four so my number four is the goldfinch the trailers both trailers just took my breath away like i remember when i saw that first trailer for the first time in the theater like i never saw it online or anything i heard about it but i just never like clicked on the trailer when it dropped uh so when i saw it theaters for the first time i was just 
kind of like in that holy shit mood. Like it really took my breath away. And then that second trailer, I think, is honestly just as great, if not but maybe even better than that first trailer. You know, you have Ansel Elgort in here who looks like he'll be really great. You also have Nicole Kinman. You have Finn Wolfhard. You got a lot of talented people here. And I know it's from the director of Brooklyn. I've never seen Brooklyn, so I can't comment on that film. But as far as how the Goldfinch looks, I think it looks really, really interesting. It looks like it's going to also be just such a powerful journey for the character. And it just looks so beautifully shot. The cinematography in the marketing, the trailers, just put me in absolute awe. And the more I watch the trailers and as we get closer to the release of this movie, the more excited I am. So yeah, my number four is The Goldfinch. I cannot wait. Guess what? Roger Deakins is doing the Goldfinch. Yeah, he's in this. No, episode. no, yeah, yeah, that's right. And Mary told me about that. I'm excited about that too. Yeah, I'm excited for that. He's one actually too. doing two movies this year: that and 1917. Oh, Ooh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, I'm not, I, honestly, honestly, I'm not surprised because 1917 cinematography looks gorgeous. So yeah, that's awesome. My number four is Little Women. So I haven't seen uh, what Laybird. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to watch this one, um, but I'll check out her first movie. Um, it looks interesting. I've never read the book. I will be renting the book from the library. The cast is fantastic. It's like one of the best casts. I've seen in a while. Uh, Saoirse Ronan, Florence Pugh, Emma Watson, Laura Dern, Meryl Streep. And it looks well shot. Um, I'm excited for this. So um, I, have, I think I'm going to watch Blade Bird soon. So yeah, I look forward to watching this for the holidays. All right. So uh, my number four, again, this one was my number three for a while. But ultimately, I just had to lower it to my fourth slot. And that is It Chapter 2. Uh, look, this is a film that um, I am absolutely hyped out of my mind for. I mean, I adored uh, the first one for sure. Uh, and there are so many possibilities for what they can really do here. I'm not going to go on it too much because I actually just talked about it in my uh, September movie preview. So I'm not going to get into it too much overall. But I am very, very excited for this one. I love the idea that they're all adults now. The cast here, I mean, James McAvoy, Bill Hader, Jessica Chastain, those three names alone just the trio of actors there. I'm very excited to see what they do bring to the table. But also just the idea of childhood trauma and how that carries with you as an adult and the effect that that has on you uh, is something I'm very excited to see them explore. I think definitely this film is going to be a lot darker. They've already said it's going to be much less of a horror comedy like because the first one was kind of a horror but it, it was kind of like a blend of those two genres this one's gonna uh, be much more of a serious drama uh, horror film which i'm definitely on board for um and what they're doing with pennywise as well i think is a really cool idea i love the fact that he's more like uh, decrepit and old and he just sounds really worn out but you also see just how relentless he is and it makes him like so much more terrifying i honestly do think bill skarsgård could top his work in the first one here uh just i, I watched this trailer a lot lately just because we're getting closer and closer to that release date and just the more i watch it man uh, i'm i'm just so hyped for it i think there are so many like i said possibilities for what they can do here i'm so excited to see where they go with the long runtime especially i mean i think that they're definitely going to be able to flesh out a lot of key things for sure part two you know i i'm, I'm especially hopeful because you know how much parts you end up sucking in the miniseries I'm, I'm excited to see how they end up doing it correctly here and writing the Rons of what they did in that uh, miniseries, of course. So I hope that they get that right. I think it has the potential to be a really great uh, finale for sure. And uh, yeah, so definitely number four, it chapter two. All right, my number four is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Um, I have been excited for this movie for a while. Before the documentary, uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, I didn't know too much about the life and how much of an impact that uh, Mr. Rogers had on the world. But when I watched that documentary, it just, it was... Nice to see how much just one person had so much impact on not just children's lives, but just everyone's lives in general. And having Tom Hanks, of all people, play Mr. Rogers is like literally like one of the most perfect castings I think I've ever seen. And I just love that. And you already see in this trailer that he is already embodying Mr. Rogers. And I love that. 
and I can't wait to see this movie because already with watching the trailer, I already got like super emotional. So I'm very interested to see how you know see the movie. Just it, it because like I said, he's been he's a, such an influential uh, person. And, you know, I'm interested to see how that will be portrayed in the film. I think Tom Hanks will do a pretty fantastic job uh, portraying Mr. Rogers in this film. So I am very excited. This movie uh, looks really fantastic to me. So, yeah, I'm very excited for it. My number four is Parasite. All right. This film right here, I only know... A very very little about it. I, I believe there's some trailers. I have not seen it. I'm trying to go into this very very blind. From all I've heard about this film, this is the new film from. I hope I'm saying his name right. Bon John Ho. Who? Yeah. Okay. I think, no, yeah, I yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's I think it's Bon John Who. But yeah. So if you don't know what he's done, he did the host Snowpiercer, uh, Okja, um, uh, and you know so a lot of our films. But this is his new film, and I everyone is saying it's his best one. Yeah, a lot of people are saying it's like the best one of the year. It won to me, which to me I think is like the most like I can, I like it more. I can I give this one more weight than Best Picture. It won the Palme d'Or at uh, the Cannes Film Festival, which is a huge honor. That right there is you know a huge reason to be excited. Uh, for it um and this film you know it sounds from what i know interesting it, it's about like a family that are all unemployed and like they're fascinated in, like different like lifestyles i guess and they get involved and then like things start happening uh um, that's all i know it might be a bit off but that's what i i've heard I and mean, i don't know anything else because i heard this is a good film to go into blind i heard it's a very shocking intense surprising and really just like insane film and i'm just super excited to see this so that is why parasite is my number four yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Now, let's get to our number three. So, my number three, you could say, is a joke. Oh, Joker. God damn it. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, oh, Kevin. I had to shit. do that. Oh. <laughs> Aside from that amazing pun right there, I am very excited for Joker. I feel like I'd be echoing everything everyone has been saying at this point. But, you know, it looks very dark. It looks like they're going to really go for that R rating. And Joaquin Phoenix looks like he's going to really kill it as Joker. Like, it's just amazing to see the, am the amount of commitment that this guy has for this character. And I really think he's going to just really do something special with this role. And, you know, the fact that Todd Phillips is directly directing this it's interesting it's crazy to think that you know it's from the same guy that's directed the hangover trilogy uh due day and some other stuff and i know when they announced this movie and they announced him directing it most people seem to think that was an odd choice but me personally i didn't think it was an odd choice just because i saw his previous movie war dogs and uh war dogs uh, after i saw that movie uh, and saw how dark he made that movie as it, as you know the movie was going on and on i was confident from that moment on oh yeah he could really bring the darkness and joker obviously robert de niro he looks like he's gonna do really great here too it also looks really beautifully shot and it just looks like unlike any comic book film we've seen but it's like what Caden said when it comes to a character like the joker this is not a character you want to hold back on yeah for pretty much uh, all the reasons everyone has been saying that is why Joker is my number three. <laughs> calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. <laughs> is the Joker okay? I'll, I'll calm down, but um, I'm very excited. For this movie. Okay, calm down. I'm very excited for this movie. It, I love that it looks like a crime drama and a character study. I love how grounded it looks, and I'm, I'm definitely for sure going to see on the biggest screen possible. I think I'm going to go for IMAX, and I think Joaquin Phoenix laugh is very terrifying, and he does look very oh, creepy yeah, in that sure. movie. So, yeah, um, pretty much what all the guys are saying. I'm very excited, and I think it's going to be a game changer for sure. Yeah. 
All right, so my number three, uh, like I said, for a long time, It Chapter 2 was here, but there's a little movie coming out that I'm just a little bit more excited for, and that's without a doubt The Lighthouse. Uh, I have been hyped for this pretty much since I've seen The Witch. Uh, I saw Robert Eggers' work there. I still do think The Witch is one of the best horror films of the decade, without a doubt. It's such a great uh, folktale about like the loss of innocence and things like that, and uh, seeing what he's doing here uh, makes me that much more impressed, because I think he's really going to branch out as a director because what we're getting here similar to Ari Aster with Midsummer earlier this year and Jennifer Kent with The Nightingale looks completely different from his previous work and I'm very happy about that I love how just secluded this entire thing feels um, I think that definitely is going to heighten the suspense level, but it's also going to get us to really dive into these two characters and just seeing how eccentric and weird they are and how that really starts to drive them over the edge. I'm already hearing amazing things about uh, Willem Dafoe, which I mean, that's to be expected. He's one of the best actors out there right now. So that's definitely not surprising at all. But seeing Robert Pattinson here as well, I'm very excited to see those two working together. Uh, and it being in black and white as well, I think is a very interesting choice. I'm excited to see what they do with that i think there's de i think definitely this is one of those films that is definitely going to be elevated by its uh black and white cinematography for sure it has a real eerie sort of vibe to it but also seems like it's gonna have a little bit more humor in there which i think is actually really gonna work for a film like this and i'm just really excited to see how this turns out i'm hearing rave reviews of it you know people have been talking about it pretty much since I think like Sundance and things like that. And I've been excited then, but especially with this trailer that's come out recently, it's just gotten me that much more hype for it. So for all those reasons, it is definitely my number three and probably my most anticipated horror film for the rest of the year. All right. My number three is also Joker. Um, this movie, like when I first heard about it, I was kind of iffy about it. I'm not going to lie. But then when I heard the casting of Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker, I was like, oh, uh, okay. Like, it, it just changed my perspective completely on this movie. And then, you know, we started seeing images and started seeing trailers. And I got more and more hyped for the movie as I kept on seeing more for it. And this movie just looks eerie and dark. And it's just everything that this movie needs to be about the Joker. Um, I remember when uh, Kate, uh, Kate and I were hanging out, and um, we saw the trailer in IMAX, like the teaser. Oh my gosh! We saw the teaser. And I just got chills. I was like, "Oh God!" Like I'm just, I'm not ready. But we're like, we were like, we're not ready for what this movie is pre gonna present us. Because the fact that mm -hmm. this movie is gonna be a hard R. Oh God! Like the things that they could do with this, like because the Joker is not a you know is a character that's very 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 unsettling. So the things that they can do with this, uh, I can't even begin to imagine. So this already could be like one of the darkest comic book movies we have out there, and um, I'm very excited for it. Um, like Brian said, this could be a game changer for the whole genre, and I'm very excited for it. I, I'm really looking forward to this a lot, and uh, yeah. So Joker comes in as my number three. One second. I just gotta look at something very, 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 very quick. Okay. Oh God. Here we go. My number three is a hidden life. All right, everyone. Oh wow. Okay. So nice. Number three. So. Higher than a, a lower than a. Know, uh, Terrence Malick is, in my opinion, one of the greatest directors who has ever touched a camera. Um, I oh, think he uh, might just be the greatest visual director of all time. You know, that's a Bill Bull claim. There's a lot of great visual directors out there, but he knows how to create, like, a visual masterpiece. Um, and, uh, you know, this film, I mean, visually, let's start off visually. I mean, I, I didn't watch the trailer uh, for this uh, when it came out on purpose, but I saw it in theaters in front of the Peanut Butter Falcon, and I'm not complaining because, my God, this fucking movie cinematography wise looks so goddamn beautiful oh, yeah. um looks like he has that signature style he captures intimacy unlike any other because i think like actually capturing uh intimacy and in visuals is really really hard to do but he does it he has this, like zoom in effect on it and like like this like um way of doing like close-ups and you know, filming you know different situations happening and you know capturing different like emotions and stuff um 
he is one of the best directors to capture emotion ever. Um, and I honestly don't think anyone can really dispute that. This film looks like, especially, it's going to have that core of emotion. Uh, because, you know, this film, I didn't know exactly what this film was about before seeing the trailer. So I was very, because I heard it was like, you know, another period piece, you know, um, drama. But I didn't know the film was going to be about a guy who is, you know, we're, we're, uh, basically, you know, captured because, you know, he doesn't want to, you know, fight for the Nazis in World War II. Um, you know, how that affects, you know, his, you know, personal life and, you know, his, you know, like, you know, he's finally you know, getting involved you know, with, you know, this, um, you know, this, uh, you know, this girl. And, you know, they, you know, they're coming together and, you know, they're really bonding. And then, like, they're just, like, you know, it's, like, take it apart. And to me, um, that is really, really heartbreaking. And I'm interested in seeing how Terrence Malick captures, you know, a story like that. I'm just so excited to see, you know, Terrence Malick do another film like this. Because um, as much as I think um, The Tree of Life is a masterpiece, my favorite film of him is, is, is The New World. Um, which, you know, was about, you know, the relationship between, you know, um, I believe it was Captain Smith and Pocahontas. That film is definitely the closest, I think, that film is probably the closest we, we, we've gotten to him making a movie like this. And that film ha is one of the best romance films I've ever seen. And um, it captures the war element so perfectly, and I'm so excited to see him him go back to a period piece like that and do it um, in this. Obviously, they're going to be very different films and stuff, but I'm just really excited to see it. I think Terrence Malick has um, another, uh, uh, hopefully another hit on his hands, and I cannot wait to see a hit in life. That's why it's my number three. Now let's get to our number two. So, my number two is Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I can't believe it. It's the final movie in the Skywalker saga. I really enjoyed The Force Awakens, uh, and I know it's a controversial opinion, but I love The Last Jedi. And with J.J. Abrams coming back to do The Rise of Skywalker... I can't wait to see what he's going to bring to this movie, how he's going to wrap up everything for these characters, and what he's going to do with Palpatine. I'm very curious about that. Of course, it looks visually stunning. The direction looks really great. There looks like there's going to be a lot of excitement and um, intensity to it. And you know, the entire cast, as usual, they, they look really great. Daisy Ridley, um, John Boyega, and then you know we're going to have Carrie Fisher here, in which I'm curious to see how J.J. Abrams is going to use Carrie Fisher and this one. Just the fact that everything's coming to a close for this saga, as I said, it's just very exciting. And just the more I see footage and when I find out like more details of where they're going to go with the story and all that, the more excited I get. I'm ready for an epic conclusion. And that is why Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is my number two. Bro, I legit have no idea where your number one is going to be. Jesus <laughs> it's Christ. always what his number one is now. <laughs> I, I literally don't know. Okay, okay. when I get to my number one, I will actually go back to you guys. Uh, but Brian, go ahead. My number two is another movie that involves a clown. The guy from Barry, Jessica Chastain, and uh, James McAvoy. And it's called in Chapter 2! Yeah. Oh my god, I can't believe this movie comes out. We're almost there. Uh, it feels so unreal that we're getting in Chapter 2. And yes. I love the first one. I'm very excited for the second part of this story. And I honestly hope it's better than the ending of the miniseries, because... Uh, special effects don't really look good. It doesn't look good anymore. And I heard that the climax is epic, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be something heart-pounding and I heard emotional. I heard it's emotional. And, um, man, I have no clue where this movie's going to go. So, yeah. It's chapter two. <laughs> All right. Uh, my number two. Now, like I said, this list was very difficult to make, minus the first two spots. They were pretty much always the same. They have not changed. My number two is absolutely uh, Joker. Look, um, the second that I heard two things. One, Joaquin Phoenix is on board. Probably my second favorite actor working today. I think he's absolutely phenomenal in everything he does, especially coming off of You Were Never Really Here last year. Especially after that, I've really been starting to recognize just how talented of an actor he really is and things like that. But then hearing that this is going to be a hybrid of like... Uh, uh, 
Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy, both which happen to be Martin Scorsese films, oh yeah, I'm in. Uh, that's all I really needed to hear. I think this is going to be fucking amazing. I am so excited to see the way this turns out. Um, I think just the idea of having this really realistic setting and showing this story of this failed comedian and things like that, that everyone's just kind of laughing at, they're not laughing with. There's a lot they can definitely do there, uh, but you're also portraying someone who clearly has a mental disability and how people put him down upon for that and how that's eventually going to get him to revolt against society. I think there's just so much potential with this film. I mean, having Robert De Niro in here as well, Dazzy Beats, uh, Francis Conroy, uh, Mark Maron's in here. I mean, just a real shame a Wiggum, uh, just a really phenomenal cast overall. Like all you guys have said, I love the fact that this is rated R. I love the fact that they're just going for it. It's not going to be sanitized at all. I think this has potential to be something really amazing. I don't think it's going to top Endgame because nothing will, but if anything at least gets close to Endgame, it's going to be this film for sure. I think this can be absolutely fantastic i agree with brian it's gonna be a huge game changer i think after this film we're gonna start to see directors you know if it's as good as we think it's gonna be we're gonna start to see directors being like you know we can do our rated stuff we don't have to hold back and i think it's yeah. very much required for this one i'm just so mm -hmm. to see how this turns out so for all those reasons and more joker is absolutely my number two all right so before i talk about my number two i'm gonna just say this real quick <clears throat> I had my list all prepared. My list was all prepared, ready to go. And then, um, about last week, I think, um, I, I'm taking a nap, right? I'm having a nice, peaceful nap. I wake up, and I hear, Breaking Bad, El Camino, Breaking Bad movies announced. I'm like, what? And then I'm just like, oh my god, I don't need to know anything else. The fact that we are getting a Breaking Bad movie, oh my god. So yeah, if you couldn't tell, my number two is El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. Um... Look, all I need is that teaser trailer, and, and that's it. That's all I need. I just need the fact that we are just getting a Breaking Bad movie, and that teaser trailer, that's it. I don't need to know what this is about, really. I can kind of tell it's a, it's about where Jesse Pinkman's going to go after the series finale. Um, that's all I need to know. Really, I don't need to know anything else. If you guys know me, Breaking Bad is my favorite show of all time. It's like top mm -hmm. five favorite things of mine in general. I love that show a lot. Um, like, seriously, it's like incredible. Um, I love all five seasons. It is literally, in my humble opinion, the definition of perfect television. So the fact that it is coming back and, you know, we're getting a movie and it's going straight to Netflix so you can watch it right there on your own television is quite exciting. I'm very, very excited to see this movie. I'm interested to see where this is going to take in order of where Jesse's going, especially, you know, after the series finale. Um, I'm really interested in this. Like I said, all I need is just that teaser trailer and just the fact that we're getting this movie. You know, I don't need to know nothing else. That's all I need to know to just be really, really excited about this. So, yeah, my number two, a Breaking Bad movie. Well, I thought Jesse was a street racer at one point. No? We forget about that time. <laughs> he was also trying to take down a uh, religious cult as well in the path. He, was also, he also used to be best friends with a horse. Yeah. Hey! All right, my number two, easily uncut gems. Holy motherfucking oh shit! Oh my god, <laughs> this movie. Now, I swear to God, let me say something quickly. <laughs> Y'all will think there is a main reason why this went number two, and yes, it is one of the main reasons, maybe the main reason, and I'm not. He's gonna be in it for like 15 minutes, probably. I don't <laughs> give a shit. He's still gonna be the best performance of the year. We'll get to that soon, but good time was one of the most insane movies I have seen this decade. Um, we watched I, that together. Yes, yes, we did. That is great, very true. Great movie, right? Ben and Josh, Fantastic. the brothers. I believe you pronounce your last name Safty. Safty, yeah, yeah. Safty. So they got their own style. Um, and with good time, it really fucking showed because that movie needed to, like, like, like it, it had its style. It was really intense. It, it was very gritty, very grimy. Um, and I, 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 I really, really, really like that movie. Now with this one, Uncut Gems, their, uh, their follow-up, um, it, it, it's, it's following, like, the same idea of, like, things being, like, you know, it, like, like, stolen or, like, situations coming up, like, out of, like, nowhere in, like, how people, like, react to the situation and how to, like, escape it. Because the film is about how 
this owner, uh, Howard of Adam Sandler, he has uh, a bunch of his um, merchandise, like, you know, diamonds or whatever, like jewelry stuff stolen from him. And he has to pay, like, he basically has to figure out, you know, I guess, like, how to get, like, have back or, like, pay, like, the debts for it or whatever. And knowing, um, you know, the brothers and how they film stuff, I'm pretty sure Adam Sandler's character is going to go after and try to find who the fuck did it. And it might get a bit violent. Uh, and, uh, you know, knowing good time and uh, me really liking Adam Sandler in dramatic roles, uh, I'm fucking really excited. I think Adam Sandler is a very talented actor with the right scripts, and I'm pretty sure the um, everyone behind this uh, is going to make sure Adam Sandler, um, you know, goes into the right directions as a character. And Adam Sandler, you know, is smart enough to know like how to do a role like this anyways. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, the plot just sounds really interesting to begin with, especially because it's taking place in the Diamond District of New York. And... We got a little someone in this movie who, um... And that is Kevin Garnett. <laughs> what? Wait, Kevin, wait, wait, Kevin Garnett, wait. Kevin Garnett is in this. Kevin yeah, Garnett's in this? What the fuck? Yes, he is. Kevin <laughs> Garnett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is easily my number. Hey, well, you're telling me that... Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Are you telling me this right now? That Kevin Garnett and... The, the greatest man ever lived, the fucking weekend, able fucking test fake the goat are both in this movie. Yes, yes. So, Kevin Garnett is playing himself. I'm pretty sure at the beginning of the movie. Yo, imagine if he's uh, playing Kevin himself, yes. Weekend go 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 to buy like jewelry and stuff, and then later on in the movie, Adam Silo's character comes to visit them with like a gun and is like, What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he he's like, oh, I don't know. That was not awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't know Kevin Grant was in this. If you guys don't know, I live in Massachusetts. I'm a big NBA fan, so I'm obviously a Celtics fan. Kevin Garnett was a part of the 2008 Celtics team. He's one of the best. He is a part. He made the one of the best memes in NBA history. Anything is possible. And uh, I, I'm just so excited because Kevin Garnett got a big personality. And knowing him, he's gonna make this movie more entertaining. And then, and then, and then. I mean, my boy, the motherfucking weekend. My favorite fucking artist. I love that fucking guy's music. I love his fucking style. If you don't know, Good Time is like one of his new favorite movies. He tweeted about it on Twitter back in August 2017. Which when you, saw it. you watch that movie? And literally the reason I watched that movie, I'm not even joking to you. I kind of wanted to see it. He said, oh my God. And then, and then Abel said it was pretty great. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch this now. Um, and now he's in this movie. It's I mean, be I, I, I don't blame you because Abel Tesfaye is our lord and savior, but... Lord and savior. It's cool, too, it's cool too, because this is premiering at the Toronto Film Festival. He's, you know, from Canada, um, so he, he is going to be premiering right in Toronto, the heart of Canada, and uh, it's going to be very, very fucking lit. Oh I'm ex excited for this movie. I, I am seeing this in theaters. No matter what, I don't care. I will sell my kidney to see this movie in theaters. Okay? <laughs> Whoa, dang. <laughs> wow. Oh. Joking, obviously. Wait, uh, <laughs> wait, hold the phone. Is Gina Benzel's in here? Qu is, qu yes. quote, of, quote of the year from Caden LaPlante. That, that, be, that should be in the trailer. I will sell my kidney to see this movie. Yes. <laughs> I am just really excited to see this movie. Yeah, that was quite a great reaction from Caden. And, um, and, and, and we're not even at the number one yet. Well, we are now officially, but... Yeah, now with that in mind, let's get to our number one. Okay, so I said I was going to go to you guys. Uh, with all the movies I mentioned, what do you think my number one's going to be now? It Chapter 2. Uh, Irishman? Oh, I already mentioned Irishman It Chapter 2. Oh, well, I honestly have no idea at this point. Um, um... Did you say Dr. Sleep? Uh no. Um Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna literally count down. Uh and wait, then wait, 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 wait. Okay. Did you okay, I need to ask okay, I'm gonna ask for uh what I'm gonna ask if you mentioned this in your honorable mentions, okay? And then I'm gonna guess if if you didn't, okay? Okay. Okay, did you guess uh knives out? Uh, I mean, no. I mean, did you say knives out in your honorable mentions? Uh no. Okay, I'm just gonna guess that just for the sake of it. Well, ding, 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 you're right. My really? number one is oh, Knives Out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I am hyped, boys. I mean, I mean, all these movies I'm hyped for, but this movie in particular, 
Oh my God. But it's funny because I, I literally discussed with uh, Kevin last week how, you know, at that moment, I wasn't sure what my number one was because I had to look through all these movies. I'm not for sure but, it was Star Wars. Holy shit. But but honestly, when I looked through all these movies, when I looked through, okay, what's the trailer that got me the most hyped? What's the storyline that has me the most hyped? It's honestly this movie, to be honest. And, you know, it's funny how I bring up Ryan Johnson because he just did The Last Jedi. Yeah. Um, and now he's moving on to something else, something more uh, original for him, which is really cool. You know, more in the veins of stuff like Looper and all that. Um, and it's a whodunit kind of story. And I, I can't that. wait to see a Ryan Johnson whodunit movie with, honestly, what looks like one of the most stellar casts of this entire year. You've got yes. Daniel Craig. You've got Chris Evans. You've got Tony Collette. You've got Lakeith Stanfield. You've got Catherine Langford. Anna Baker, got... let's go! <laughs> with the wokest opinions of them all, the best movie opinions! Catherine Langford is a fantastic actress. Shut the fuck up. She is a great actress, but I, I want to see the Hannah Baker Twitter account review Knives Out. It's gonna it'd be pretty funny. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you got you got Christopher Plummer, and the list pretty much goes on and on Jake from there. Curtis. Like stellar cast all around. Love the look of the movie too, and I just love the style that Ryan Johnson is bringing. There's just something about the style that I'm getting from the trailer that just really, really excites me, and I just can't wait to see how they play out this whole whodunit storyline. It looks like it's going to be really intriguing. I hope it's not disappointing like Murder on the Orient Express was. Oh, I man, hope yeah. <laughs> I, I hope this could be a whodunit movie that's actually very well done, and based on the trailer, it does look like it could be very well done i just love the style the tone the cast as i already mentioned a bunch of times and yeah I, I just can't wait for this it's one of those movies that i just get more excited for the more i think about it definitely my most anticipated of the season probably not a movie you all expected for me to say oh, no. this, this, this season uh but yeah honestly this is honestly my number one so my number one for the rest of the season as well as the year of 2019 is indeed Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, that, that none, none of us got it because, like, uh, I've, I've talked to uh, Double Nine, like, uh, before this, and, like, everyone thought it, he, he thought for sure it was going to be a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I thought for sure it was going to be Goldfinch. Like, literally nobody suspected this. So, I like, didn't suspect I, this at all. I'm going to be for real. I did it. I, I, I didn't even know, like, what your thoughts were on this movie. <laughs> Same. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't think I ever told you guys my thoughts on this movie. Yeah, so. I never told oh. But like before I say it, I hope it ends like a Halloween movie. If Chris Evans wears the Halloween mask, it ends like a Halloween movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. My number one is a small indie film. I don't think any of you guys heard of it before. Um, it comes out on December 20th. And it's a little film called Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, stealing my jokes now, I see, you piece of shit. Kevin. <laughs> This is what um, I do whenever a big film comes out. Okay. I am a huge Star Wars fan. Well, the movies mostly. Not like, you know, the fans that read the books and all that stuff. This is my childhood ending. For the second time this decade. First it's <laughs> Harry Potter, and now it's Star Wars. And I yep. think I'm going to cry at the end of this movie. We don't know what's going to happen. Palpatine's coming back. I hope he laughs more, because I love him, Palpatine laughs. And I can't wait to see the end of these, end of the character arcs that they started almost five years ago. So, it'd be funny if Mark Hamill asked, like, the Joker at the end, right? That would not be, no, that would not make sense, no. I don't, oh, I don't, I don't, they'll do it. Don't don't worry. Worry. I don't imagine. But, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I love the teaser trailer they dropped recently. It looks amazing. And, um... I'm not prepared for this movie emotionally either, so... Yeah, my number one is Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Or should I say The Joker? All right, Kevin, I already know what your number one is, but tell the folks what your number it one is. It is uh, most of definitely game. Cats, of course it is. It's always, you know, it's always It's always a musical. Um, That's always, you know, my number one, so it's definitely Cats. I'm just, I'm really excited to see Taylor Swift as a cat that's been a dream on for years. No, 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 no. I'm just joking, guys. I'm just joking. 
for once, and this is going to be shocking to you, for once my number one is not a musical-related movie. This is like That's the true. first time ever that this has been a thing. But my number one, without a doubt, uh, ever since I knew that this was going to be a thing, ever since I knew it was coming out this year, I knew for a fact to be my number one. My number one is, without a doubt, The Irishman. Um Oh, wow, I thought it was Spies in Disguise. Fuck off. Uh, I don't think I... <laughs> oh, yeah, I've always... Well, that, that's the, yeah, that's, that's been my other dream, is to see Will Smith as a bird. <laughs> that's something I've always wanted to see as well. Honestly, honestly, all I've ever wanted in life is to see Taylor Swift as a cat and Will Smith as a bird. And once I've seen those two things, then I can just... I can die. You know, that's all I need to see. But uh, Oh, yeah. Regardless, um, all right, this is a film that I don't think I really need to say too much about. I mean, Martin Scorsese is the GOAT. He is easily my favorite director of all time. Um, and what I love about this movie is that he really is going back to his roots here. And what better way to do that than reunite him with basically the guys that cultivated his career? You know, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, um, those two especially, you know, they've really defined a lot of what has made Martin Scorsese uh, who he is today. You know, things like Goodfellas, even going all the way back to Mean Streets and things like that. And then Harvey Keitel as well. I mean, he's literally been with him since the very beginning. So this really is him, like, going back to his roots. And then him finally working with Al Pacino. I'm shocked that he's never worked with this guy before, considering the kind of films he's made. But thank God that he finally is. I think he is going to be fantastic. Uh, I'm very excited to see what they end up doing with him for sure and i mean this being his final uh gangster film it makes sense to a go back to his roots and because this most likely is going to be the last mobster film he ever does for sure so it makes sense to go back to his roots getting that veteran cast but martin scorsese he wasn't satisfied with that he's like you know what i'm gonna go one step beyond i'm gonna make my movie longer than a movie that al pacino's in which is insane to me this movie is literally 10 minutes longer than the godfather part 2 literally anything can happen in this movie and you know while most people are like well does the movie really need to be that long that just gets me hyped as fuck because literally no martin scorsese movie unless you're gang gangs of new york in the age of innocence uh drag for me all of them go by really fast and scorsese is the man when it comes to movies like this similar to most scorsese films i know very little about this figure jimmy hoffa and things like that i don't know too much about him but it sounds like a very interesting Interesting story and of course I do have to address the elf in the room the de-aging I think looks phenomenal I don't know why people are harping on it so much I think it looks fantastic I was literally talking to Kane about this like the other day you could take Robert De Niro in a scene from Goodfellas and then take him in the Irishman put them side by side they're almost identical. Like, it's scaringly real. And the cinematography here is just, mwah, mwah. I love it. I love everything about it. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just the definition of perfection for sure. The score, I'm sure, is going to be amazing. And I hope to God that I'm going to see this in theaters. I most likely will. I already do have plans. I'm not going to get into it right now, but I already do have plans to see this movie in theaters. So hopefully that is the case because this is one where, you know, there's a lot of movies that come on in Netflix, so like, I'm okay waiting for this one. I, I literally can't. Like, I need to see this the second it comes out. It's Martin Scorsese. Just all of these things contribute to why this film is my number one. There is no film this year that I'm more pumped for than this one. And so I think I've made all of, I think I've made a reasonable case for why this is my uh, number one for sure. The Irishman. All right. All right. We don't even need Tony to do the introduction. It's, it's Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker. All right. Look, this movie looks like a shit. All right. I cannot wait. Look, this is the third film franchise this year that i'm witnessing the epic fucking conclusion to okay i am hyped this shit for this okay we have spent now three trilogies into the skywalker saga and it's finally coming to its epic conclusion and mm -hmm. i am just hell to see it as you all know i am a mega star wars fan i love star wars other than toy story it's probably the thing i love the most you know i've enjoyed pretty much a good majority of the movies that Disney has said. Actually, I've enjoyed all the ones that Disney has made so far. I love The Force Awakens, and I love The Last Jedi, so I'm hoping this rounds out the trilogy in a nice, in a nice little bow. I am excited to see how this all concludes with um, the Skywalker storyline. Um, I love the teaser trailer, and I love the um, little teaser that they did for uh, D23. The set pieces look fantastic. The visual effects look amazing. I'm just really excited to see 
where this is going to head into in terms of this finale. You know, with all these movies going over, over almost three hours this year, I hope that, you know what, though, something? I hope this joins the club. I really hope I, 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 it. I, it should. should. I, I actually, I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. Yeah, it I, should. I, 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 I really hope this joins I've the club. I've talked to the guys about it, yeah. I, I really want this to be the longest Star Wars movie that has come out so far. I really want to, because it's fitting for this, because it's the epic conclusion, and I can't wait okay. to see I'll, I'll enjoy, I'll probably, uh, you know, Hopefully, hopefully, I enjoy every minute of it. So, yeah, I'm excited for this. This is, yeah, without question, this is my most anticipated movie of the rest of this year, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. His number one is Abominable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. See, he's, 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 he's practiced, he's pretending to be the Yeti. That's why he was doing that. Yeah, no, uh, I'm going to go all the way to Toronto to see the premiere at uh, Tiff. Um... So, um, you know, it's pretty crazy that we're, we're finally at this point uh, where I'm about to say this, and uh, it, it's really, really crazy. Uh, my number one is obviously It Chapter 2. Um, I, I think everyone knows at this point, but this is easily, and I honestly, look, I know I'm only 16, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be the most anticipated film for the rest of my life. This has been the film I've wanted the most to happen out of any film, like, that could possibly ever happen. It is a, the most important, like, story in my life that I've ever come across. I absolutely adore it. Besides, like, the, the child orgy thing, the book is pretty much, like, perfect. Uh, it's really, really fucking weird and creepy and intense. Um, it's just, I, I feel like it's, like, Stephen King at, like, his, at, like, his best. And, like, you know, he's written a lot of other great material, but to me, it is, like, the king. When we were doing, you know, the top five, uh, in 2017 for Fall and Winter, uh, you know, obviously, it, the, the chapter one was my number one then, because that was, that was the most anticipated back then, that now it's my number two of all time, you know, when we're looking More back. More than BVS? Wait, what? More than BVS. BVS is my number three. <laughs> But when we were filming that, you know, I was not expecting it chapter one to make over one hundred twenty million dollars opening weekend. Yeah, absolutely insane. I, I've already said this story before, and I like to say just because I, I still am mad at people for this, and I don't care. Oh. Before, the, before the teaser show for the first one came out, people were making fun of me for because I was so excited, and no one really said they would care, and it was like the the one of the biggest horror hits of all time. And it's it really, really made me, like, emotional in a sense because it was like, holy shit, like, this film actually, like, is, like, way bigger than anyone anticipated. It's anticipated. Everyone knew it was going to be big because it's it's based off it. It's, you know, mostly because of the miniseries and stuff, and it involves a, a clown. Um, but, you know, it's just, like... CSSS was so insane, um, and I love uh, Chapter One. Uh, I just saw it again in theaters for the first time when the re-release happened, and I, and I, I, it was my, I loved it the most of any watch I've had. I've seen it four times. You know, like my little issues with the film um, is that you know, and I'm bringing this up for a reason because you know I thought Mike was. Bare, was barely in the movie and that really pissed yeah, me off yeah. because he should have been in it more and one of my other issues with the film is that I was I, I still am a bit annoyed that so many of the kills are off screen now with chapter 2 from what I'm hearing about this film they changed that Mike is the history guy he's one of the most important characters in the film that I'm excited about and they show the, the kill on screen I don't care Headwise is a fucking monster he's literally like the devil like reincarnated i'm excited to see the kills on screen because knowing they're making the budget bigger and i heard the cgi is better in this one i don't think the cgi is like terrible in the first one but it's definitely not as good as it could have been um i'm excited to see how they do the kills in this one because i'm just saying this right now parents don't take your kids to this movie it's gonna be one of the most graphic fucking movies to come out in a long time like mainstream movies i i guarantee that why am i excited about this one more than the first one um i mean just because the first one was great and obviously this one is going to be bigger and i hope i think hopefully better but it's because the adult losers to me i'm in the minority on this because a lot of like diehard fans like the kids stuff more but i like the adult losers more than the kid losers because to me i think it's exploration of trauma and memories um, is really, really unique. Bill, Beverly, uh, Ben, um, Eddie, Richie, um, Mike, and Stan. And, you know, like, all of them, they all handle trauma in a different way. And I feel like the book, in the miniseries, they they, they, they tried their hardest. But when it comes to the, the trauma aspect in the miniseries, it was kind of funny. They didn't really handle it well. 
Yeah, like, I felt like a soap opera. Uh, but with uh, chapter one, the um, with Bill and the trauma, I obviously they didn't go as did that deep. They're gonna go deeper into it in this one. Uh, but I thought it was well handled, and he was steady is underrated in the emotional category because the first one had a had emotion to it you know it was you know wasn't like a, you know a ton but it, but it had emotion i'm gonna cry my eyes out i don't give a fuck uh adam's gonna make fun of me because he's gonna be with me but uh it's uh, it's, it's gonna be it, it, i'm really excited he's currently to dead yes 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 it's okay now he was uh, killed by pennywise yeah he was now um i'm really excited to see how they take the emotional and trauma aspect and make the film feel really like heavy and weight because that is what is so terrifying about it is that it's like it's like it takes your traumas um you know this like this thing and it just fucking like obliterates it and like makes it the scariest it can be and knowing this till now it understands the the losers ever because it, it's been waiting for them it's been craving them and knowing it's gonna go after them and be even more fucking vicious i'm really really excited to see what they do visually in this film and i heard there's a lot more pennywise in this which i, I mean i i, I he, he was really great for what he had in the first one but i i'm excited to see more because you know Penny yes like my favorite villain of all time, obviously. I uh, uh, besides Joker, you know, two two clown movies, yay. Um, this this uh, this uh this end of the year, and then I mean, let's go to this fucking cast. I mean, uh, let me just pull it up on my phone really quickly. Um, I mean, first off, we got James McAvoy, you know, as Bill. Uh, obviously, I mean, if you've seen um Split and Glass, you already know James McAvoy is an insanely fucking talented actor. I think he's a really really good trait uh, a choice for this role. Uh, I think he can really, really nail it. I'd say probably the most talented is obviously Jessica Chastain in the cast is Beverly. Beverly's my favorite loser. Uh, I'm I, I really like Jessica Chastain as an actress. Um, her performance in the Tree of Life is amazing. Uh, I'm not sure what else. I've 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 seen her in some other things like you know Interstellar, um, in The Help and stuff. I think she's a really, really great actress. I'm excited to see how she uh, portrays Beverly in this because. Uh, Beverly, um, you know, is like the bravest out of all the losers, I feel. And so I'm excited to say Jessica Chastain captures that. Obviously, you got uh, Dave Ryan as Ben, which uh, I'm excited to see that because, you know, I don't believe he's really been in anything really ever like, that got major before. I'm excited yeah. to see he's in this. Uh, you know, Ben's a very interesting character, definitely. Uh, and then, of course, everyone is talking about Bill Hader. Uh, who is an underrated actor, definitely. He's going to be Richie, and I heard he's like the standout of the film. And it's going to be interesting seeing Richie because Richie is an interesting character because in the first film, he makes so many jokes, and at the end, he's so serious. And I feel like Bill Hader is such a great actor to capture an adult Richie who, you know, is going to be joking around, but like when shit's going to get serious, it's like, how is he going to hide that that? fear at this time how is he gonna attempt to um you know lead in his way and obviously you know you got i i hope i say his name right isaiah mustafa, mustafa as i think is how you pronounce it as mike uh mike is um a really underrated character in my opinion i know they're, ad they're adding even more to him this time i won't say what they are what they're adding because I, I don't want to ruin it because i'm going to know but I'm, I'm excited to see how they add more even make him even more human and he's gonna have the history stuff this time it was cool seeing Ben have the history stuff in the first one, but Mike should have had it. You got James, I think, Ranson as uh, Eddie. And then, of course, last time I got Andy Bean as Stanley. Um, interested in seeing how they do Stanley's stuff in this one. Like, how far are they going to go with it? How are they going to do it exactly? And then, obviously, I mean, Bill Skarsgård is fucking, like... He's so amazing in the first one. He, I think he's already better than Tim Curry uh, was. Yeah. Um, and people are, people are like, uh, like, knocking on him for some reason now. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. It's fucking, it's stupid. But uh, I mean, knowing he's gonna have even more to work with in this one, I mean, watch out, people. Bill Skarsgård is gonna come for your fucking throats. He is gonna be fucking insane in this movie. If he was as great as was in the first one, knowing how insane he's gonna be in this one, uh, I'm, uh, I'm very, very excited. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of scared because he kind of freaked me on the first one at points you know uh, i you know it would be interesting to see if this one was still free almost three hours if endgame wasn't so long uh but i'm happy they're taking the risk by being like you know what let's be the next studio to do a film that's almost three hours in the a in the modern age of when films are two hours to two and a half hours like the big blockbusters and stuff so i'm excited to see how they tap into pennywise's backstory that's gonna be really interesting because they tease that in the trailer with the bob gray stuff this is my most suspicious film ever because it's like back when i was five years old you know i got introduced to this uh the, you know the miniseries and stuff and you know after that like i told so before i got more into it you know i got a copy of original copy of the book and stuff uh you know read the pieces of it and then like you know, i saw the miniseries again and i said to myself man i really want like a like 
a tradition that's never so many rumors for so many years about it and now i am less than a week away until seeing chapter two which i'm just more excited about because this is the one that needs a remake more than the first five mysteries this is going to be like a life-changing experience for me because it's like finally having this chapter in my life close is actually really insane because the stuff i love i like i really really make it public how much i love it um and stuff which you know annoys people but fuck it this is like my favorite fucking thing ever basically and it's actually finally ending basically you know there's rumors it might be a chapter fuck that shit this is the fucking ending um what the it's fuck do they even do with a chapter three They'll yeah story, but i don't even know how that will work when the director's cut's gonna have a lot of that but whatever um i'm just i'm just so fucking excited to fucking see this film i i, I can't put it into words this is most of all time i don't it, it, there would be ha there would have to be something like so fucking big to like like fucking like take this down this is like the king of them all i've wanted something to happen for like over a decade now i i would fantasize about how this one would be and it's actually happening what the fuck i'm just i'm so fucking excited and yeah that is obviously where chapter two, uh two is my number one and uh probably my star was number one yet so yeah Jesus I, I honestly, I honestly hope it opens with an Old Spice commercial, and I'll be happy. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Yeah. The whole movie is secretly an Old Spice commercial. <laughs> Wait, they should make a gag if they go back to like the pharmacy and Mike is there, and there's like Old Spice, and he's like, "I might buy this." Hello, ladies. So I don't make funny. That'd be funny. Yeah. Ooh, all right, everyone. Finally. So that is our <laughs> top five anticipated fall winter 2019 films video. I know that was a very jam packed video, but can you yeah, really yeah. blame? But can you really blame us with the season that's just jam packed filled with uh, a lot of movies? So it's like, yeah. Um, but yeah, this was as always a lot of fun. Always great to hear the enthusiasm and passion from my guests. And you know, once again. Uh, thank you for getting us to now five years of this anticipated series. Very exciting to see that we've come to five years now. It felt like yesterday when I did the very first episode, but now that we're at this point, it's just really exciting. So yeah, I just have my guests to really thank for that. Everyone that you've seen appear in the series, even if it's just one time in the series, thank you for even being a part of the series. And um, yeah, comment down below. Let me know what are your top five anticipated movies for Fall Winter 2019. It could be a top 10 even if you want to. And of course, before I wrap up this video, I will let everyone have their outro one by one. Starting off with Brian Mendoza. Where can the people find you? They can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Oh, yeah, five years later. Don't forget my letterbox. Because I do review on there mostly. Um, I do videos once in a while on my channel, but not as often. Sometimes I would do it with some of my best friends on here. Mm -hmm. And um, I gotta say thank you to everyone who's been watching the, this series since we started. I mean, 25 years ago. And um, I hope I get to see most of these movies. And um, not end up with a Dracula and told right yeah. there. So we'll see. Um I got AMC A list, so I hope I can pull it off. So uh yeah. As always, this was a lot of fun. Always really enjoy uh, doing these videos for sure. And uh, glad I wasn't the one talking the most in this uh for once. That was uh a bit shocking. Uh Caden. Um <laughs> I will beat your ass. I will fuck you. I will get Pennywise to hunt you. Oh okay I'm so scared. Actually, I, uh... <laughs> Bro, if Pennywise was real, you would be, like, absolutely terrified. I'm, I'm shaking Dude, him same up. Same here, dead. honestly. If he was I real... Would be, I would be dead. I would literally be dead. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but, um... We need, we need Idris Elba and his hot well, sauce I mean, he, 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 all he has to do is be in the form of Tony, and then I'm just dead. Because <laughs> <laughs> Pennywise appeals to fear, and Tony scares me, so... <laughs> Hello, Kevin. Oh, God, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> but either way, either way, this was a lot of fun. Always enjoyed doing this. Uh, lots of movies coming out in the fall for sure. As always, you guys can find me at uh, my YouTube channel. It's just my name and things like that. Uh, I do, in fact, have a letterbox as well, Mr. Broadway 456 Very active on there. So definitely uh, 
check me out over there, you know, Twitter, Instagram. I got them all. I honestly name a social media. Uh, aside from LinkedIn, I got it all. So, uh, yeah, definitely got that stuff over there. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I uh, can't believe it's been five years. Thank you to everyone that's watched us. And uh, here's to uh, many more for sure. Definitely uh, pretty crazy how long it's been. Oh, my God. Um, thank you once again, Mr. Tony is trying to to talk, dude. Uh, my man, my home boy, the home slice himself uh, for having me on for the, uh, you know, uh, for always having me on for these top five lists. And, you know, uh, it's been five years. <clears throat> Crazy. And, uh, yeah, uh, thank you all for tolerating my dumb ass and listening to my list. And, um, you know, I hope you all have a good night. Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel, FilmFan0599. And, uh, yeah, penis. Wow. Thank you for having me on, uh, Tony the Tiger Dude. Uh, I'm very ha excited to be on here, as always. These are my favorite videos to make, uh, really, uh, every year. And, uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be on another one. And uh, you can uh, find me. Uh, links will be in the description down below, I, I assume. Yeah, they, they, they will. For everyone, yeah. links will be in the description down below. Mm -hmm. um, so you can find me on my YouTube channel. I'm most active on, also, uh, Letterboxd. Uh, I write a lot on there. Um, I really, really enjoy doing stuff on there, so I'd appreciate it. You would check me out on there. And um, there's also, like, my Instagram. You know, I don't post much on there, but there's also that. So, uh, yeah. Again, thank you for having me on, and uh, it chapter two in a few days. <laughs> so since these guys brought it up, yes, I do also have a letterbox, and I am pretty active on there too. So if you want to follow my letterbox, so everyone, this is Twenty Two Tiger Dude here with Brian, Kevin, Double Nine, and Auburn, and don't forget that all of us here will always have Tiger this is years, that, was like, that was like so bad. It was so delayed. Shut the fuck up. Jesus, fly penis. I said it before all you fuckers. Five years. Woo, tiger power. Woo.